Hello guys, and welcome to the Sega Gaga open source translation project's very first Let's Play. Now, if you've read the site, you know that my goal is to translate Sega Gaga for the Sega Dreamcast in its entirety. Um, ideally, someday that will be modded into the game, but others have tried that before and failed. So, at the moment, my goal is just to translate it and to present it to you in a way that even if you don't have any experience or knowledge of Japanese, you can play through and enjoy the game. And that's basically the purpose of these Let's Plays. Um, this first Let's Play and the second one are going to be, for Chapter 2, are going to be the most important ones because they're going to explain um, how the game works, its mechanics, um, how basically how to play the game and what the menus do and things like that. So the way I've envisioned this is that after watching this video, you can turn on your Dreamcast with Sega Gaga, boot it up, and then on your second screen, like a smartphone or tablet or computer or whatever, you can open up my full translation video of Sega Gaga. And in that video, I translate every single bit of text, every non-essential NPC character text, absolutely everything. So if you have that open while you're playing the game, you'll be able to on the fly switch between the genuine Dreamcast game you're playing and my video, and you'll be able to follow along with the story and understand what's going on. But this video and right now, I'm not gonna worry too much about translation. I may mention a few things here and there, but it's basically just to get you up to speed with the game and its mechanics so you can enjoy it. And I do believe after watching this video, you will be more than capable of playing the game in the manner I suggested with a second screen, playing through Sega Gaga and enjoying it almost in its entirety. Maybe not 100%, but 95% there. So yeah, let's get started. So before we start, you do actually have a couple of options here. You can either start from scratch, like I'm going to do for this video, or you can download a VMU save file that I'll provide uh, links to in the description and on the website, and that will let you start at level 169, making battles a complete breeze, and it'll give you, it will let you start with 20% market share instead of three. So that'll give you a bit of a safety net in the management sections of the game that start from chapter two. So click A on the top option from the menu screen, start a normal game, and then from there you'll be given the option of start a new game or continue. We want to start a new game, so select that top one. First of all, we have to name the main character of the game. By default, his name is Sega Taro, um, but I'm assuming you can't speak Japanese, so let's go over to, you can press L and R, and let's go over to Roman Alphabet. That's this one here. And I'm just going to put his name in in English to make it easier so that when we in menu screens and when talking to people, at least you know, um, oh, not Toro, Taro. At least you know when they're saying his name and stuff like that. Okay, Sega Taro, there we go. Um, you can put it in a different name if you like, but. I always like to go for the canon names in these types of games, so yeah, click, 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 press A a few times on end. And now the heroine name. Her name is Haneda Yayoi. Haneda is a place in Tokyo, it's where um, Sega's headquarters used to be, so it's a reference to that. We just we don't have enough space to write in Haneda Yayoi, so we're just going to put in Yayoi, which is her first name. Yayoi. And again, go down to end. Yes. And now the opening movie will start. I'm not going to fully translate it at all. Well, I, might, I may mention a few things, but I'm not going to translate it in this video. Again, you can go to my other video for the full translation. But this is the main character, Sega Taro. And that's the Sega headquarters in this game. And oh, there we go. That's the old, that's a real Sega headquarters in Haneda. It used to, it used to be in Haneda. Um, I think since then, they're not at that building anymore. They've moved to Shinagawa. And that is Yayoi there, the heroine. 
And this is President Hitomaji. Ma、uh, Hito, Hitomaji. 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 Okay.、Um, he's gonna. He's welcoming you to the company. He's telling you about the Sega Gaga project again. I'm just gonna skip through this video to save time.、Um, your goal. And this that second character is Arisu. Or、A、Arisa. Arisa. Sorry. So she's gonna take us on a tour of Sega headquarters. This is the Terra Drive supercomputer, and yeah, it's a little bit different to the real Sega Terra Drive.、Um, I'm sure some of you have heard of that. It was a Jap Japan-only IBM computer that was compatible with Mega Drive games. Very expensive these days. Very sought after by many collectors. This is the factory where they manufacture and ship out one million Dreamcasts every day. If only, eh? This is the software department where the gourmet、um, workers burn Dreamcast GD-ROMs every day. And now, finally, we're going to come to the development studios.、And、this is where a very large portion of the game takes place. Is in these three development studios, A, B, and C. You need to go into each one,、um, complete the dungeon, bring the developers back to sanity, and recruit them so that you can, from chapter two onwards, make your own games and making good games. Will increase Sega's market share. Game is going to skip through this. Yep, she's basically saying the. Yes,、yeah, keep tapping A for here. Okay, and now we have the meeting room menu. Okay, the top option that is selected now is talk. If you click that, you can talk to. Arisa,、um, and get a quick recap of what you should be doing now. It's probably pretty useless to you guys if you can't speak Japanese, so we're just going to say no. So yeah, you don't really have to worry about that top option. On the left here, we have the status screen. This will show you. This here is Sega's current market share. It's at three percent, and Dogma is, which is basically Sony, supposed to be Sony. They're at ninety-seven percent. Um, so yeah, the current situation is E grade, dangerous. If you if you fail to make games in the second chapter, this will go down to zero. When it goes down to zero, it's game over. In the bottom right, it says your、um, deadline. You've got two years and twelve months. <laughs> two years and twelve months. Yeah, you got three years basically.、Uh, if you press R, again, this won't be useful until the second chapter.、Um, actually, I'm gonna. Leave that for now and go over that in the second chapter because you don't need to know about that yet. But that's basically telling you the situation for each of your development studios, which we haven't opened yet. And if you press L, you'll go to your character stat screen.、Um, we got seventeen of seventeen HP. We got seven of seven dream points, which is this game's equivalent of MP.、Um, why dream points? Well, because game developers are supposed to be Um, sleep deprived, so that's where they get their power from the little sleep they can get. And below that, you've got some other stats you don't really need to worry too much about. They'll increase as you level up. On the right hand side, name Segataro, level one, development experience.、Um, this is basically how many games you've made. So far, we've made none, and you won't make a game until the second chapter. But I believe. I can't remember now, but I believe every time you make a game, you get one development experience. But maybe that's wrong, though. Maybe it goes up differently to that. But yeah, next level. Oh,、uh, it says there, "Tsugi no level made two." So I think you need two development experience points to gain. So you need to develop two games to go up a level in your development experience. And then below that, it says in English, even attacking power nine. And below. Just below that, in Japanese white writing, it says Harisen, which is、um, like the traditional, like fold-out Japanese fan. That's your current equipped weapon. Obviously, pretty weak. 
Below that, defensive power six, and it says outer plus one. So basically, um, yeah, you're currently wearing a jacket, and that that's it. Um, yeah, and Okozukai, that's your pocket money, the very, very bottom, and it says two man. So a man in Japanese is 10,000. So two times 10,000, 20,000. You have 20,000 yen. That is separate to your development budget. That pocket money is basically to be used in the shop to buy items and stuff. Okay, so that's all you need to know for now. Press B a few times and go out. At the bottom here we have save. If you've downloaded, these are the two files I was talking about where you start off at, oh this one here, where you start off at 20% market share and level 169. Uh, if you're not using that, just go to a free space down here. Um, it should. If you're not using that, it'll all be free, so you can go onto one, click A. Oh, I've got no space. I'm gonna have to override. Oh, I'm gonna have to override. Uh, overwrite this one. Overwrite this save file there. Okay, so we've saved. Now we can go back, and then you want to pick this option on the right, which is move. So click that, and. Um, here we've got the reference room. This is basically every game you've made. This carries over through playthroughs. Every game you've made, every enemy you've defeated or, co or collected, um, every get, uh, every piece of hardware you've developed, a few other things. On the right here we've got Development Studio A, which is where we have to go in a minute. But first of all we'll go to the shop here on the left, okay? So click A on that. And there are a few things you want to buy here. You want to buy the Pico Hammer, which is yeah, basically a hammer, good a weapon. Click A on that. Yes, buy that. And then here you've got um, Hori Vitamin E. And you may recognize this. If you've been to Japan, you may recognize this and this, the bottle shapes. In every convenience store in Japan, you can buy these little... Like, some of them are energy drinks, some of them are vitamins, they come in this small glass bottle like that. Some of them claim to, um, in this one called Ukon, Ukon is it something? Um, that it claims to cure the effects of a hangover. Um, yeah. So, this one here, it, um, gives you HP. A little bit of HP, so it's a weak, um, potion. So we're going to buy a few of those. Let's buy three, four, let's buy four. Okay, and then this one here is Homo Ludens. It's, uh, it's actually a book, Homo Ludens or something. Uh, maybe, uh, I, maybe I should have heard it, but I've never heard of this book. But if you can look it up on your line, uh, if you, you can look it up online if you like. This basically restores your dream points or your MP. So we're going to buy two of those. And then here, Unkeru is a more powerful MP potion. We're going to buy one of those as well. Why not? Why not spend all our money, eh? We're going to get plenty more in the dungeon. So let's go over to Development Studio A, the, the game's first dungeon. Click A. Okay, here we are. Okay, so basically if you hold B, you can run. Um, I recommend you do not do that, especially at the beginning. Just because if you run, you avoid all encounters. Um, we don't want to do that. We need to level up and we need to recruit um, develop, um, designers and programmers um, and directors for our game. So I recommend just walking. Now, I'm not going to talk to any of the non-essential NPCs in this playthrough. You can do that yourself, um, or you can watch my guide. Uh, I'm just going to go through the essential things. Okay, so first of all, let's press Y and have a look at the menu. Um, on the left here, we have um, colleagues. These are like, kind of like, think of it. Like Pokemon, these are your Pokemon you've collected or your colleagues. You'll put, you'll use these colleagues from chapter two onwards when you develop games. Um, you need one director, three programmers, and three designers. Well, you actually only need one of each, but it's best to have, 
but you need one director, it's best to have three designers and three programmers, that's the maximum you can have in a development studio, and that will help you to make better games and do it quicker. So you want, by the end of this chapter, you develop one, you, sorry, you open up one development studio, so you want at least enough um, employees to fill that room up so you can make a game in chapter two, okay? Next, we have Hattari, which is your um, spells, basically. We don't have any at the moment. It's actually tra it actually translates as bluffs. Um, and here, this bottom option is leave the dungeon. Now, be careful. You don't want to leave the dungeon unless you have to. Um, every time you leave the dungeon, you lose one month of off your development time. So you get one month closer to the deadline. And that's a really high price to pay, especially later in the game. So you do not want to do that unless possible. And that also means that you want to do everything that you have to do, collect all the colleagues you need from each development studio in one go. Uh, you don't want to have to come back here again, because it will cost you. And at the top here we have items. Let me show you that again. Yeah, Top option, items. Um, first, top one here is use. We can use, you remember those items I just bought at the shop? The HP boost, these two. And then this one, the MP boost. We don't need them right now, but if you just press A on them, you can use them. On the left here, we have equipment. And if you remember, we bought the hammer. So let's go and press A on the hammer. Now it's equipped. Um, that's the fan that we had before. We'll sell that. I think we can sell it, but yeah. Um, and at the bottom here, we have throw away. You can throw away items. Okay, so let's get off that for now. Um, yeah, that's everything. Okay, so we're going to continue along the dungeon. Okay, here we are, first enemy. I'll quickly explain the way the battle system works. Um, on the left here you have your spells. We don't have any spells at the moment, so we can't use them. But the most important spell spells are um, the ones that increase your health. And there's one other spell, slow, slow down, that you'll get later in this dungeon that will um, like immobilize an, 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 an enemy temporarily. Um, for the final boss of this dungeon, you definitely need to use that. Okay, um, on the right here we have items, you can use your items here, um, healing and stuff. And at the bottom here we have runaway. I, I recommend never picking this, um, we need to level up unless you're very low on health um, and that reminds me of the top of the screen top left you've got a few stats there the top one 17 of 17 that's your HP and the one below it 7 of 7 that's your magic points okay so for the time being we're just gonna pick the top option which is attack and the characters throw insults back and forth and um, tell them tell each other to get to work and stuff Okay, we defeated him. Sometimes you get a chance to um, recruit them, or like if you're thinking like Pokemon, like capture the Pokemon. We didn't get it this time, so too bad. Oh, we leveled up. You actually level up very quickly in this game. Let's continue on. And remember, not running. We're just going to walk and take any fights that come. Okay, this... If you can read Katakana, this one here in green writing, it says Designer. Um, so that means that's the type of staff he'll be if you get him, he's a designer. Remember, you need three of those. Um, so yeah, let's fight him. Okay, and now if you see now, he hasn't disappeared. He's still there. That means we're going to get a chance to recruit him. So we press A a few times. It'll come up here. Um, if you pick the bottom answer, it will say, I don't want to bother trying to recruit him. If you pick the top, you'll try and recruit him. Okay, this now this next section is the most difficult part to play and understand if you have no Japanese ability. So I'm going to show you how you can be successful in this section of the game with zero Japanese ability. Now, to be honest, even myself, I'm no Japanese expert. I'm not a quick reader. So this is the way I do it, because if I'm trying to read and comprehend everything on screen... Um, there's actually a time limit as well. There's a, like a 10 second time limit, but there are very long 10 seconds. But 
if I were to try to read and comprehend each one of them and pick the right answers, I wouldn't have enough time. So basically, we're just going to guess. Um, the way the, the way this mini game works is the prospective employee, the enemy there, they will ask you questions about things, and you have to give them answers that they like. They'll ask you things about the work environment, work hours, girls, things like that. But we're just going to guess some, okay? So um, I'll go for it slowly. So this here where it's all just writing, it's it's just a regular question. So just guess. Okay, I got it right. So the bar went up on the left. Um, again, another question I'm going to guess. Okay, now these numbers. This is the salary. If you choose the higher number, the bar, the meter on the left will go up. If you choose the lower, it'll go down. As you can see, the bar is below the white marker there on the left, so we were unable to recruit him. Next time I'll go a bit faster and just guess some so that we have a chance of recruiting him. Influenza. Very appropriate for the time we're in right now. Okay, we've got a chance to recruit the influenza. I'm not sure if we really want an influenza in my development studio, but oh well. So yeah, we're just going to guess them really fast. Okay. Okay, now I got a few right, so the bar's quite high above that white marker. I'm going to bring down the salary to bring it down again. And now, see that red and yellow marker? That says Nesage, which means like discount in Japanese. That means we got this member of staff um, for less than the default salary. So that's a good result. If you can get that, that's enough. You don't have to get... It's not going to be... It's not going to decide whether you're able to complete the game or not, unless you... As long as you recruit them for below default, you should be within budget to make games. Okay, so now, after you've recruited them. Now you can choose the name. You can put in, if you go to this one here, again, you can put in an English name if you want to make things easier for you. I'm just gonna, or you could get it to pick a random name for you, or you can just stick with default, which is what I'm gonna do. Go on end. And so yeah, we got him for 4,750 yen. Um, that's the monthly salary that he'll cost in the management part of the game. This part to the left here is completely non-essential in terms of story, but there are a few um, unique... I'm not sure if they are unique, but there's a few um, members of staff you might want to recruit here. So the nap room. Okay, gonna get a chance to recruit him. I should have mentioned this earlier. On the right hand side, you've got the stats there. This, his stats are pretty shitty, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, just guess them and be careful. The only thing you gotta be careful about is the money. Don't offer them too much money. Just try to get it below that. And now I can lower the price. See? Because I did well, lucky, I can lower the price when it comes to those numbers. And now we got him for a discount. Again, go to end. I'll show you that a couple more times and then I'm going to run through the rest of the game because, or not run through it completely because we do need to level up a bit, but I don't want to waste too much of your time watching me do that, but I do want you to get a feel for how to play it. Yeah, as long as you don't run and you just take all the encounters that come, you'll be more than high enough level to complete this first chapter. See, that's a good. Oh, it was a good start. Now it's going shitty. Okay, we didn't luck out this time. Oh yes, we did. Nice. Okay, now we've recruited a few people. I'll go back to that screen on the menu. This one here, um, friend, well, colleagues. 
And here it shows you who you've managed to recruit. The blue ones are programmers and the green ones are designers. And remember, we need three of each. Um, we'll, there's also directors or producers, um, but you will get some of some producers automatically just by going through this chapter. So you don't need to worry about that. You just need to make sure you get at least three programmers and three designers at below default cost if possible. Okay, so now we're going to continue to write and talk to Yu Suzuki. It says recommended level two. We are level two. Uh, let's actually, let's fight once more and try and get to level three. Maybe recruit this guy while we're at it. Okay, I've lucked out there, so now I'm going to have a chance to lower the salary a bit. Oh no, I've gone too low. Oh, lucky. There we go, down to 14. Down to 13. I'm going to leave it there. There we go. If, in, you do have that option. If, if you're in the clear and you've already got a discount, just stop pressing the buttons and the meter will slowly go down, but you should be okay. You can watch it and get a feel for how much you can just leave it like that and still be successful. Okay, now let's talk to Suzuki. I think this is supposed to be you, Suzuki. We should have healed up, really, but it's okay. We've got 22 or 25 HP. That's more than enough. Just keep going with attack. I've got to say, I do love the animation on Sega Taro in these um, battles. It's quite simple, but it really looks it's quite nice. I'd have done that. It reminds me of um, there's a fighting game, um, Rumblefish. It was for the um, a Thomas Wave, Sammy a Thomas Wave hardware. Um, it got a PlayStation 2 release, but the animation in that game kind of looks similar to that, with like the individual, the different body parts having individual animations. Anyway, I'm gonna skip through this. Again, just remember. If you want to see the story, there's that other video I've done with a full translation, so go to that. Okay, we're going to go up to the top here because there's actually a little item to get here. It's not essential to the story, but we'll go there anyway. Okay, we've already got one of these guys, but we may as well try again. Um, after we finish chapter one, we'll be back at the menu screen and then we can look through who we've um, recruited. In, chapter, in this first dungeon and we can get rid of any of the excess ones and just keep the cheaper ones. Okay, nice. See, just, just sheer luck, I'm able to get a massive discount here. Okay, continue up. and talk to this guy on the candy cabinet. And he just gave us an item. Um, what was it? This one. Um, yeah, basically it's... Ah, this is... This is... Just, you want to save this for when you're developing um, in the second chapter. It will give your staff a boost. We'll explain that later. So we'll just go down and carry on the main path. This guy again. You win some, you lose some. Oh, okay, I think I accidentally raised his salary a bit there. I did get it below average, but 
not as cheap as the last one I've got, so we will be getting rid of him later. Yeah, if we go back to our colleagues here, you can see this yellow one. This is these are directors, so we've got director Suzuki. Um, we've got three um, designers now, but three of them are the same. I like to have three different ones, but you don't you don't necessarily need three different unique ones. And we've also got two programmers, but their stats are not so good. Okay, let's continue on. Up here, oh, not there quite yet. Oh, not you again, go away. Okay, um, up here, this is the storeroom. And oh, look, there's some Dreamcast dev kits there. In each of these rooms, there's usually unique enemies. Like this guy. I've leveled up, nice. Level four now. Yeah, level four, yeah. See if we can recruit this guy and then we'll leave. Last try, I'm not going to waste too much of your time. You can do this on your play run, play through. It's not got bad stats, this one, so I would recommend trying to get him. Okay, now, see, right now I can just leave that there. I'm amazing, I can lower his, his salary a little bit. I'm just going to leave it there and let the time run out and I've got him for a discount the bar's not going to go be below that white line so we've got him and okay that's enough of that we've got him go down here and you've got the debug room and as you can see there's little dreamcast cute little dreamcast controllers here because this is where the game testers would be and we've got a unique director here um, yeah let's try and get him His stats are actually really low. Um, you don't, I would, and he's quite expensive. I wouldn't really worry about getting this guy. So he's lucking right out now and managing to get him for a discount. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, you know, we've got enough of them and I've got one of him at a really good price, so I'm just gonna go on no, don't bother trying to recruit him. Okay, now we're heading into the um, programming department. We've got Candy Cab Man here. I'm just gonna leave it there, get him a discount. I'm not gonna risk it by picking any more answers. Okay, so actually already we've got enough. We've got enough, we've got three programmers. 
Um, we've got four... Oh, sorry, four programmers and four designers. We don't need to get any more people. We've also got two um, directors. So we could leave it there if we want. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to bother trying to recruit anymore because I don't want to waste your time. But I do recommend you guys have a good look around and try to get at least one of every type of staff, especially in this first chapter, um, and get them at a discount. Okay, let's go up to Programmer Oka. We'll talk to him. Again, I'm just going to skip through it for now. Oh, I forgot. I should have really healed before going into this battle, but it's okay. We've got a chance to do it now. Just press left and go on to Hattari there, the spells. And now, because we're level 4 or 5 now, we've got this spell, Karagenki, which uh, basically costs 3 MP and it will heal us. Now we'll just keep attacking him, and he should go down in a few hits, two or three. There we go, gone. Okay, and he'll tell us a little story about the lead programmer of this department. And how the lead to the lead programmer was made so it was due to a lack of staff for an event. The lead programmer was made to dress up in a yellow bear suit and get on stage with the characters from an obscure Sega arcade game called um, DD Crew, which is a scrolling beat em up. It's not even a very good scrolling beat em up, to be honest. And those, the characters from the game kicked him in the head 17 times or something. Anyway, yeah, watch my other video if you want to know the full story in full. Okay, this is the lead programmer who was made to dress up in a bear suit. Um, you're not going to fight him now, so don't worry. You'll just automatically faint. And Yayoi is back. She's going to tell us that some of these staff are... Like zero hour temp staff, or it calls them baruk, baruk staff in Japanese, but I guess the equivalent in English is like zero hour workers or temp staff. And she's basically saying that they can't be relied on or trusted. But Sega Taro being the good boy he is wants to give him a chance anyway. Anyway, so now we need to head back to Programmer Oka. No, I am going to run here. I don't recommend you do. Okay, speak to him again, and he'll tell us a story about when him and the programmer, lead programmer, worked on the R720 project together. Oh no, maybe that's, that's later, sorry. Okay, he told us that we need to get the gold flag. Um, the gold flag is the key that links the development department and the programming department of the de development studio together. Because, uh, sorry, design and programming department. Because um, designers and programmers are apparently sworn enemies. Um, they are competing over limited resources and RAM or whatever in games. Um, and we need this gold flag to unite them. And this flag, it, it's it's a reference into um, programming talk, like a flag in a game. I think it, I think what it's referring to is like an if statement. Like for example, if your health, if health reaches zero character dies you know that's it's like the health reaching zero is a flag for your character dying i think that's what it's referring to but i'm not too sure okay we've already got one of them whatever okay and for to get the money sorry to get the gold flag you need to first find the gold flag seed 
And that is hidden in this room within the Dreamcast console on the desk. This guy here is a reference to programmers who were struggling with the transition from 2D to 3D back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when, you know, a lot of those 2D games and franchises had to be made into 3D, and there were programmers who had spent their whole career working on 2D, and they weren't comfortable with 3D yet, and they struggled to wrap their heads around the, the concept of it. Okay, so just go up to this Dreamcast on the desk, hit A. And now we've got the flag seed. Okay, so we next we need the flag water. This is the only time in the whole game, not just this chapter, the whole game, that I'll ask you to do this. You have to leave the dungeon. So hit Y, go down to this bottom option, press A. Um, go down again, press, that's to select yes, press A again. And now we'll leave the studio. We have to do this to get that item, but we do lose 30 days. So we'll go over to a shop, and automatically the clerk will give us the flag seed. If you want, like I have, I've got some extra money now that I've acquired. So actually I'm going to buy this leather jacket here. There we go. And if you need any more, any items, you can, you shouldn't do really, but if you need any items, you can buy them there. Um, yeah, so let's go on our items, equipment, and go to the leather jacket. And that's going to increase our defense by three points from 13 to 16. So let's just press A on that to equip it and leave. And now I'm going to go all the way back to, oh, no, now we have to go up to this room here, the flag control room. Um, each of these plant pots, if you go up to impress A, it will tell you they've, there's a tag on there. Um, this one says Fragman Todai, which means meet the flagman. Okay. Um, this one here says Aru programmer no hanashi. So talk to a programmer. That's referring to programmer Oka that we just spoke to. And that's why the flag has grown because we've accomplished that task. This one here is meet Flagman. So let's go down to here and talk to Flagman. And he's going to tell us about the flags that I mentioned earlier. And now, as you can see, the flag's grown here. Now, these flags growing, they you don't get any reward from it or anything like that. They're just to help, help give you clues as to what to do next, okay? In the in the progress of the chapter. So we're going to go to this top left flat, this top left plant pot here. It has to be this plant pot. You can't do this on another plant pot. And we're going to hit A and automatically we're going to plant the flag seed and water it. And there we go. There's the gold flag. Um, actually, what enemies are in this room? Let's have a look. Oh, maybe there aren't any. Are we going to get an enemy? Oh, maybe there aren't any. Okay, now we're going to go all the way back to Program Orca. Yeah, we're level 6. I'm not going to... I recommend you guys don't run. Just level up. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to... Drag it out any longer than it has to be. All the way back to Program Orca. Talk to him and tell him we got the flag, gold flag, and he'll tell us some more backstory about him and the lead programmer when they worked on the R720 project, which is a reference, as you can see there. Does that look familiar? Um, Sega fans out there, do you know the R360? It was a, well, maybe the most one of the most complex arcade machines ever made. It rotated 360 degrees and was used to play... Afterburner 2 and G-Lock, I believe. Um, I have actually played it once when I was a kid in London, say the Sega world that used to be in London. There are a few um, in the wild. There's a few collectors who own them. 
but there's almost no arcades that have them now because they're actually cr- categorized categorized as something above an arcade machine. Like I think maybe their class is something close to like a fairground ride or whatever, which means you need to do regular safety checks and maintenance on them, and you need a special license even maybe. I'm not sure. So you're unlikely to find them in a real arcade nowadays, but there are a few collectors with them that I'm very jealous of. Anyway, here we, we're going to go back to um, the lead programmer in the bear suit. Um, he was made to wear this bear suit at the PR event, as I mentioned earlier. He's never changed out of it since, I guess. Um, it's okay, we've already got full health. If you've not got full health, then I recommend taking an item or using the spell here, but we have, so we're just going to attack. And we're at high enough level now that we we should be able to easily defeat him just by going on regular attack. There we go, he's gone. Two hits. And we've leveled up. Okay, and he's going to tell us, please help my... He used to be my friend, the lead designer. They had an argument and fell, fell out. He wants me to bring back the sanity of um, the lead designer as well. So go up to this little gold part of the wall, press A, and you'll use the flag. And now we're in the smoking room. And Yayoi's here. She's looking a bit pale because of the smoke. So we're going to help her out and just go up to this little red and green light or button thing here, press A. Turn on the ventilation. And that's going to make her very happy, and she's going to give us a mobile phone. And if ever we need to contact each other, we can use it. Okay, now head out. And now we're in the development department. Sorry, the design department. Yeah, definitely try to get her if you can, but we're just going to skip past that and go to the left here. Um, and the uh, this is the lead designer, the big muscular guy with green hair there. He's um, asking his staff to put in a, I, I can't remember now, a 60,000 polygon trash can into a game. And they said they can't do it. There's not enough memory. And so he deleted them. Bastard. Anyway. Um, heal up. I'm actually okay. I've, I've already, I've still got 31 or 36. Um, but if you need to heal up, just press Y and then go to this right option here, the spells. And now you'll have Karagenki, which is the health up um, spell. Click A and you'll heal up. So now we're maxed health 36 or 36. When you're ready to fight him, press A. And this battle almost entirely is almost entirely automatic. Um, there's not really much you do here. So first of all, he um, uses the slowdown or like crash, computer crash or slowdown spell on you, and and you can't move. <clears throat> and he'll just attack you a few times, and you'll cool. Yayoi, the girl, and she's going to come in and save us, help us, help us out here. She's nullified the slowdown spell, and now she's going to unleash some hell on this guy. Oh, she didn't. That's the first time I've seen that. Usually she goes mad on the guy. Oh, here we go. There we go. Now finish him. We've leveled up again, level eight. Oh, level nine, leveled up twice. The recommended level for the, for the final boss is level 10. But I recommend you walk around and try to recruit all the guys, like I said earlier, get up a bit higher than that to make things easy on yourself. Okay, we've now sorted him out. He's happy again. He's, we've... He's gained his sanity, and we're going to go to the next part of the game. Again, another one of his gold doors here. Press A. 
to use the gold flag. Oh, not this guy. Goodbye. Okay, continue around here. Oh, oops, I shouldn't have bothered. Oh, yeah, see, see what happened there? It gave me the option. Basically, sometimes it will give you the option to automatically recruit the enemy. I, I think it's if you're quite, if you're high level and they're low level, maybe. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, though. You will be able to automatically recruit them for the default price without battling them. As long as you keep pressing A, you'll, you'll, either, you'll always either recruit them automatically or... Um, go into the little recruitment minigame. Here we've got some Sega hardware on display here. You can click A on them to get some information. I think that's the R720 that we mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Again, you need to talk to this guy up here. And he wants you to get a Moe Moe poster. Um, Moe is like... Um, it's difficult to translate into English, to be honest. It's like a fascination with like cute, young looking anime girls. It's a bit weird, to be honest. Definitely not my thing, but whatever floats your boat. So now we need to talk to this character up here who looks like a pixel king. Press A. And we'll be given the poster of the cute anime girl, the Moe Moe poster. Apparently this is a dot-com girl. Can't skip this. Okay, we've got .com girl. Great. Fantastic. And now, we'll go all the way back. Actually, I do want to get in a couple more fights just to make sure I get to level 10 before the end boss because we're almost at the end of the level now. I mean, if you're, if you're going to go through here and try to get one of every single member of staff, then... And do it a bit slower than I am, then it, it won't take you longer than two hours to complete the whole of um, chapter one and to get a good selection of staff for you to start developing get your own games in chapter two. No, I'm still not leveled up. Oh, this. Okay, talk to this guy again. Give him his poster. And he's going to get very excited by that poster, and that's going to happen. And next, talk to Flagman up here. And this is the Flag Field or something it's called. Basically, this is a little mini game you have to complete. Um, you basically have to walk over every space in the room without treading on any of your previous, the previous um, tiles you've been on. So as you can see, I just messed it up. And now it's going to reset and I've failed it. So I've got to go back. Okay, the way to do it is this. There we go. Okay, 
Okay, and the next the next thing to do is go to fight the final boss. Um, it's recommended level 10, so we're just going to get in a few more fights here. Oh, I didn't mean to pick that higher amount. I'm going to leave it there. See if we can get him. There we go. Should be a few more fights and we should be at level 10, I think. That's the door right there that we need to go into. Still not leveled up. What's going on here? Come on. Come on, Tyler. I think there were some stronger enemies in here. He ran away. Okay, we're getting 13 experience points from this guy. I'm not going to bother recruiting him. Don't want to waste any more of your time. If you're getting bored, just skip to the end boss. It's going to come in a minute. Cause there is one thing you... One little tip you need to know in order to... Defeat him without too much trouble. What are we on now? 24, two more. We're actually running down on health, so I'm gonna do a Karagenki. Last one. He ran away, cheeky bastard. Oh, I love the animation on Sega Taro in the battle scenes. Here we go. Leveled up, level 10. Okay. No thank you, don't wanna fight you. So let's go all the way back to that door. Before we go in there, I recommend healing. I'll do it twice. There you go, I'm at full health now. And then go to your items and you, as you can see, I've got full health, but my dream points are only on nine. So I'm gonna use a uh, Homoru Densu. And I'm on 19 now. Nice, it's better to be full, I guess, to go into this battle with full everything. Okay, let's head in. This is definitely my favourite part of the chapter. This character is quite funny if you can understand what he's saying. Huh? What's going on in here? What the hell is going on in here?
Games are just products to be sold. Copy the popular products of the day. Mass produce them. Pyre... Um, what, what's it? Rip them off. That's the way of the... Uh, that's the way of the game industry. Rip off the best titles of the day. Of the day. It's kind of true. Yeah. Um, forget your emotions and become the machine. You're the chosen game developers. Who the hell are you? I want to make. I want to make an original game, please, Mister. Huh? Original game? That's stupid. Oh, please. You need to get new users. You know nothing in the game industry, boy. I'll show you the power of an uh, office worker. Oh, ha, ha. Here we go. So, the first thing you want to do with this guy, go to your spells, Hattori, on the left there, and pick... Well, we've got three spells there now. The top one is the Karagenki, the healing spell we've been using. The middle one is new, that's Atsui Hanashi. It's like a hot talk or a fiery telling off or something. And the bottom one is Shori Ochi. This is like slow down or crash, computer crash. So we're going to use that on him. And that will prevent him from attacking us for a few turns. And now you can either attack him reg normally, or we can use that other spell we've learned, which is this one. Oh, he's attacking us again, so we're gonna choose the slowdown spell again. And to be on the safe side, we're going to um, use a Karagenki to get our health back. And we're going to use another Homoru Dance to get our MP back, because our MP is running a bit low. And now we can attack him regularly again. Okay, he's attacked us again, so we'll go to the slowdown spell. An attack. Attack. Got a critical hit on him. Attack again. He should die soon, I think. There we go. And he's gone. And we've persuaded him. We've talked him down and we've persuaded him to join us. And that's the end of chapter one. That's it. Nothing to it, really. Um, just remember those two or three options... There's two or three things to pick in battle, and remember the technique to recruiting people, and you'll be just fine. Watch the translation videos I've made to get the story, and you can enjoy this game without any Japanese. And we're going to get Mogetan, um, and Onesan, is it Nani, Naze Nani, Nani Naze, a game Naze Nani, pause out, something like that. There's one of these at the end of every chapter in the game, and some of them are really quite funny. And I don't know if you've noticed yet, but this puppet show is actually being performed right outside the old Sega headquarters in Canada that we saw earlier. And when the camera pulls out at the end, you'll see that it's just basically two employees, I guess they were two developers working on Sega Gaga, just squatting behind the uh, Sega sign with these two 
awfully cheap looking puppets. And I almost forgot to mention, after you've skipped through all this text here, go back and save your game like I showed you before. And that's it, finished, so I'm going to leave it here, guys. Um, this was the final video of chapter one, of China, the final thing I had to do. I first had the text translation, then I did the PDF. The PDF, to be honest, is still a bit of a mess. Um, then I did the full capture and translation of chapter one, um, and in that video I talked to every single character in that development studio A you just saw um, and I translate every little bit of text so you can fully understand what's going on and then finally we did um, this let's play so tomorrow I'm gonna be able to start working on chapter two uh, I hope to get a translation for that out I hope to I hope to finish the text translation within two weeks and then get the videos out within a week after finishing that text translation. So I'm going to set myself a three week deadline to complete everything for chapter two. But I mean, hopefully I can do it a little bit quicker than that. Um, but yeah, that's I mean, it's not a promise, but that's when I hope to get it all out. So look forward to that. Um, keep checking the blog. Uh, if you want to support, if you if you have Japanese ability, um, you can help me translate some things, especially the reference room. There's a lot of work that needs to be done for that. If you don't have Japanese ability, but you have, say, Photoshop skills or something like that, I could definitely use a hand um, with the PDF guide I'm making. Um, like if you could, someone could like nicely overlay. Uh, English text onto some of the screenshots like the menu screens and things like that um, or alternatively well also sorry also if, if you've got program experience if you can find a way that we can mod the Japanese version of this game to insert English text into it that'd be great alternatively I do have a Patreon um, I don't want to pressure anyone to donate any money to that um, I'm honestly, I, despite the situation we're right now, I'm actually financially sound. Um, but if you'd like to show your appreciation and um, help me pay my electricity bill for my computer to be on all these hours while I translate it, that would be greatly appreciated. But again, I don't don't want to pressure anyone into it. You don't have to. Uh, I don't have any monetary goals for this. I plan to complete the translation anyway, but. Anything you do donate will be greatly appreciated and certainly um, spurs me on to stick to my deadlines and work that little bit harder for you guys who are willing to up with your hard-earned cash for this. So yeah, I really do appreciate that. And finally, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to my patrons. That's um, Mark Fulton and Louis Colangelo. I think that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I've got that wrong. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. It really does mean a lot to me. And it makes me very proud that there are people willing to pay money to support what I'm doing. Yeah, so thank you so much, guys. And I'm going to work extra hard for you to get this done as quickly as possible. Thanks.